The data I'm about to show you are for the presidential elections from 1980 to 2024. The data come from a variety of sources, but mostly the respective state election websites. Data from the most recent November 2024 election are not static, but they've converged sufficiently for this discussion data. In the first graph, I showed the millions of votes received nationally by the Republican candidate in each general election since 1980 represented by the vertical red bars. Now, I'm going to do something a little tricky, so pay close attention. I'm going to squeeze all of those bars to the left so that the entire 44-year history is illustrated by this one set of 12 bars. Note that the leftmost bar still shows the turnout for the Republican candidate in 1980, and the rightmost bar still shows the turnout for the 2024 election. I've done this squeeze because now I'm going to show you sets of 12 bars for those elections for every state in the country. This graph shows the first 17 states. For this next set of graphs, I've grouped the states in descending order by total turnout so that I can use the same vertical scale. Not surprisingly, the number of votes for the Republican candidates are, in general, increasing over the years because the state populations are also increasing. But notice, in some states, Trump received fewer votes in 2024 than he did in 2020, like in Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana. Unless you view the raw data in this way, you would not realize that some of Trump's actual turnout had decreased because the media typically emphasizes the spreads and the percentages. The Republican Party made much to do about the registration and ballot harvesting effort in Pennsylvania, but despite all the resources they spent there, they only increased Trump's turnout by a few percent. Here is the next set of 17 states, with the scale zoomed in about threefold. Again, the trends in Republican candidate votes are generally increasing with the recent exception of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Kansas. And here are the final 16 states, including Washington, D.C. Again, the trend in votes for the Republican candidate are generally increasing, with the exception of Mississippi, West Virginia, Hawaii, Wyoming, and Arkansas. The number of Republican votes even went up slightly in Washington, D.C. Now, let's examine the analogous graphs for the Democrat presidential vote turnouts by state. Again, the general trends are up because the state populations are generally increasing. But in contrast to the Republican trends, nearly every state saw a decrease in votes for Kamala in 2024 versus what Biden had received in 2020. This outcome persists in nearly every state in the country, even DC, with the exception of Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Nevada, Kamala's turnout was lower than Biden's across the country. This is why I say that Kamala and the Democrats lost the election. They were unable to turn out voters, even in Democrat strongholds like California and DC. Had they been able to retain even a third of the 10 million extra votes that Biden had received in 2020, the Democrats could have prevailed. Now I'm going to use the same turnout data, but I'm going to show it to you in a different way. I'm going to show you the ratio of the Republican to Democrat turnouts. This reduces the effect of population growth and emphasizes the historical trend between the parties. I've color coded each of the bars to indicate which party won nationally, red for Republican and blue for Democrat. And since these are ratios, I can display all the states on the same vertical scale, and I've arranged them in alphabetical order. In the graph, I highlight where the ratio is one to one, showing where there would be an equal number of votes for Republican and Democrat candidates. Now, here's how to think about this graph. For example, note that the Republican to Democrat candidate vote ratio is increasing in Alabama. Thus, Alabama is increasingly voting more Republican relative to Democrats. Whereas in Alaska, the Republican to Democrat candidate vote ratio 
is decreasing, indicating that Alaska is voting relatively less Republican and more Democrat. As this graph clearly shows, most of the states are trending less Republican. Here are the next 17 states. Again, the trend is clear. The country as a whole is steadily voting less Republican. And here is the final set of 17 states. Note that Pennsylvania barely eked out a victory for Trump. If Kamala's turnout had not fallen versus Biden's turnout four years earlier, Pennsylvania would have experienced a different outcome. This table summarizes the 2024 outcomes and the longer term trends from the ratio graphs that I just showed you. I've labeled it the Republican Party report card because the numbers are presented from the perspective of the Republican Party. States where Kamala won in 2024 are shown in blue lettering and states where Trump won are shown in red lettering. I've sorted the states from smallest to largest Republican to Democrat vote ratio. I've also listed the number of electoral college votes awarded for each state. Then I've quantified the Republican to Democrat ratio trends in two ways. The longer term trend, including back to Reagan, and the more recent trend, starting from 2000. The trends are shown as the amount of change in the Republican to Democrat ratio every four years for every presidential election. If a state is trending Democrat, then its trend is shown in bold red. If trending Republican, then the trend is shown in bold black. As seen in the table, the longer term trend is Democrat in DC and in 34 of the 50 states. And the shorter term trend is Democrat in DC and in 26 of the 50 states. The longer term trend is also Democrat in all seven of the critical swing states and trending four out of seven in the short term. Even though Trump won handily in Alaska and Utah in 2024, the trend toward Democrats is more rapid in these two states, suggesting that they will only remain Republican for two more election cycles, representing nine electoral college votes. The data in this table clearly show that the Republican Party is failing overall nationally but especially in Alaska and Utah. Now, I've combined into a single graph the turnout ratios for each of the states where Republicans are most at risk and shown the number of electoral college votes associated with each of those states above in parentheses. Without a major sea change, the future looks quite bleak for the Republican Party. Midterm elections typically trend opposite to the party that won the presidency in the general election. Given this historic fact and the racial trends I've just shown, Republicans are likely to lose control of the House in 2026, just like they did in 2018. Historically speaking, the 2022 midterms should have favored the Republicans, but their 2022 red wave never materialized and they barely squeaked out an ineffective majority. I say ineffective because as shown in this graph, many of the so-called Republicans in Congress don't honor their oaths of office and defend the Constitution. I've prepared graphs like this for every state legislature in the country, and they don't look much better. I'll discuss those graphs in another upcoming presentation. I liken Trump's 2024 win to the Normandy invasion, by the grace of Almighty God, conservatives have established a beachhead. But the path to Berlin is well defended and many battles remain to be fought. Now is not the time for we the people to sit back and watch. We must remain vigilant. Our new general cannot fight this war effectively by himself. Here's what he said in January of 2017. But apparently, too many of us were asleep and we weren't listening. Today's ceremony, however, has very special meaning because today we are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. Will we take the handoff this time? 
We wasted our chance in 2016, and this may be our last opportunity. So, here are my takeaway talking points for the 2024 general election. Many battles remain to be fought. We have only one year to affect the necessary changes in our elections before the 2026 primaries. As I predicted, the Republican strategy of registering, voting early, and chasing ballots made little difference, perhaps 3%. President Trump delivered despite the GOP because Trump is such a strong candidate and Kamala is such a poor one. I think it was a gift from Almighty God. Perhaps he's given us a last chance to preserve our liberty. Conservatives are losing ground over the vast majority of the country, including some especially critical swing states, putting 2026 and 2028 at serious risk. Even after winning all three branches of the federal government in 2016, the Republicans lost the House in 2018. This will likely repeat in 2026. We are a different country today than we were four years ago, following the 2020 election debacle with four years more experience. We have teams in several counties across the nation that are now performing election audits using several of our new approaches. Too many grassroots patriots concerned about election integrity are not engaged in productive strategies. I call these hamster wheels, lots of effort, but little movement forward, exhausting our grassroots volunteers and wasting our limited time, energy and resources. And finally, our elections are even less secure today than they were in 2020. The only solution is for we the people to wake up, to fulfill our sovereign duty, and to reclaim our primary means of self-governing, our elections. If you would like to engage the election reform effort, the solution is local. Send me an email and I will send you a checklist to help launch your local effort. And as you are building your local team, I recommend that you schedule a public event and invite me to speak. I don't charge a fee and it will help you to get organized, stimulate local interest, and begin to build some local momentum. I thank you for your attention.